Hey guys, you're looking at some houses that we're going to make. You've asked me how you I make these prefabs. I'm going to take you from start to finish on how to do one of these. Um, you're looking at some deployable buildings from my town module. These are actually made by a community contributor. And I've got a contest going on right now um, This to make more of these. And I provide the starting templates to do it which I will link to in the comments, but I'm going to show you how to start here in Dungeon Draft and go all the way through the process until you have a prefab home um, with token attacher and everything else. You're looking at the templates that I um, was talking about. These are in special Dungeon Draft folders. And what we're going to do is zoom in on this one building just as a simple example. You can see how I've made these. I'm just kind of pulling the pieces around. These are very simple buildings built in Dungeon Draft using the Forgotten Adventures packs. And I'm just showing you here, you know, the components. I have special bases that I use. Um, I'm not gonna show you some of the advanced stuff that I do, which is some post-processing things um, to kind of make the bases work. Uh, but for right now, I'm just gonna walk you through the bases to how to go from here to having a roof and exported and, and everything all the way into Foundry. So what we're gonna do is create a, a separate, a new, level and we're going to make it uh, we're going to use the compare levels tool so we're looking at the one we just saw but we're just using it as a guide we're actually on a new level right now we're going to put a roof in of course there's the roof tool which we're going to use in a second but i just wanted to show you some other roof options that you can play around with you've got roof objects uh, like windows you've got you know those tower you know circular pieces and you even have some some floor patterns that you can create even custom shaped roofs with. But right now we're just gonna use the basic roof tool. Again, I'm looking through to the other level. There's just the one roof here. And then we're putting windows in and we wanna use the alternating window so that the light shines on the, on the same side when it's orientated up and down. And then what we're gonna do is go into the, the lighting for the, you know, the auto roof. And we're just gonna make sure that it starts to match. So I'm playing around with the direction of the sun so that it looks like the sun's coming from the same direction in both cases. And this will be a relatively short tutorial and you can feel free to pause it and kind of go back and look, look at stuff that didn't make sense to you. Now we're gonna export it. We're gonna turn off the grid and we're gonna combine it with this base. So the base was on a whole other place. And the reason we do this is because Dungeon Draft does not deal well with um, exporting shadows. And we're gonna export it and we're gonna give it a name. And then we're gonna go up to the roof level. And we're gonna export that as well. I'm exporting these at 120 DPI. That's typically good for a, like a typical map or a, um, a building. If you have a lot of detail, you want to go up to 150. And if it's a roof, you go down to 100. But in this case, I've got my roof and my building. It's two different levels in, as I'm using Clip Studio. You can use GIMP or anything else for this. And I'm putting in my DPI of 120 into my grid. And now I've recreated my grid essentially. And this is important because we need to crop all of these images to that specific grid so that it goes cleanly into Dungeon Draft or into uh, Foundry. So now what I've done is I've cropped both of these layers and I'm going to do something special here. I'm going to use something that Forgotten Adventures creates and it's a, an auto action and it's going to let me create a drop shadow underneath that, that roof. I think when you put drop shadows with roofs, I mean, it looks better in Foundry. It makes it look like it's a three-dimensional thing. I'm going to start doing more of these in my buildings going forward. And now what I'm doing is I'm exporting that PNG and I'm gonna export my roof at 100 because it doesn't need to be that detailed. And I wanna maintain a small size for these. So I'm exporting that at 100, but I'm gonna export the building at 120. It's just a PNG at 120. They're both cropped to the same dimensions of squares. So you'll see when we get into Foundry now, we'll just remember those two values, 100 and 120. So here's our 100 and we drop in our uh, our thing, and if we try to drop in the, the building at 100, it's too big. So we change it to 120. Now I've got two different 
resolutions sitting on the same map and, and lining up just right for the, um, for the grid. I'm going to put my roof on top of the building. And you can see I have my building set so that it's, it's snapped to grid. It's not halfway over a square. It's set perfectly on those squares. And there's some advanced stuff that I usually do with walls. I'm not going to do that with this one. I'm just going to show you very basically how to set up walls and then connect them all to a prefab. And then I'll put some lights in here. And you can see the settings that I typically lead with for lights. And then I'm going to make these so they only turn on at night. That way, whenever I drop my prefab out, depending on if it's night or day, it'll work. So now I've got my walls, I've got my lights, I could add sounds, I could add drawings, multi-level token, teleporters, whatever this prefab needs to support, I can add it. And you can see here I'm using the roofs module to make this roof auto-hide as well. But for now, we'll keep this one relatively simple. Now what I need is a control token. You can drag, drag any token onto here. I happen to have control tokens I use that I include in my compendiums. I might give it a name um, here, like empty house. And then I'm going to open up the token attacher UI and I'm going to lasso all of those things to it. And you can see everything is now attached to that control token. Now I'm going to create a new actor. I'm just going to call it empty house. I'll call it, make it an NPC. And for its artwork, I'm going to pick the, the same image I used for the roof, just so I can see dimensionally what this thing looks like. And then I'm going to go to the prototype token. I'm going to call it neutral, although I don't need, actually need to. And I'm going to click the Assign Token button. Update Token only updates what's on that screen in front of you. Assign Token replaces everything on that screen with the attributes of what's, what's on the scene. And you can see now I have a deployable prefab that I can use anytime I want. And now my players can run inside it, explore, and I can, I can use that over and over again. So I know this was a really quick fly through. But hopefully it helps you guys see it's it's not complicated to make these things. There's just a few steps involved. And now you can have really any kind of um, elements that you can deploy. If you're interested in my contest, I'll leave a link in the, uh, in the description for uh, this video. And of course, you know, stop by my YouTube and ask, or my, uh, my Discord and ask questions anytime. And, and that's basically it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and, uh, and have fun making your maps.